Hello everyone, uh, my name is Ricky. I'm here to present our project towards automatic mapping of pedestrian path networks at scale. So a little bit about me. I am uh, a postdoctoral scholar at the University of Washington. I work at the Pasteur Center for Accessible Technology. My research interest is on computer vision, machine learning, and accessibility and transportation. And I work on uh, use data science approach to solve the problems that arise in uh, practical applications. So sidewalks and pedestrian paths are the key to a healthy transportation network and building a, a uh, accessible city. And the significance of having a map that details the location and connectivity of sidewalks crossing the curves can be described at different levels. First, at the individual level, um, traveling on the sidewalks can be challenging to many degrees of, for many population because of the uncertainty in um, navigation due to discontinuity in the sidewalks, missing crossings, and unpredictable barriers. And at the city planning level, planners are often impacted by the lack of network data. So they are unable to identify the bottleneck in the pedestrian layer and make informed decisions about uh, resource allocation. And planners need to know where, um, if the, where the infrastructures are, how are they impact the individuals, and they need to have some data-driven ways to model the, how potential changes may impact mobility and accessibility in a, in a particular area. So to provide the answer to the, to the to, to, to provide the answer to the question that city planners may have, we need to have a map that detail the location and connectivity of our sidewalks and crossings so that the planners can have like a data-driven ways to understand how potential changes might impact the current infrastructure mm -hmm. and to make the um, data-driven data decision requirement. And while the automobile road has been mapped extensively, the pedestrian environment or the sidewalk environment have not been mapped. Uh, most cities do not have a geographically accurate map that details the location and connectivity of sidewalks and crossings. They do not show where are the sidewalks or how they, are, how they connect to each other. And currently, uh, most mapping methods typically rely on human service uh, collection and annotations. And these methods are laborious, typically non standardized and very difficult to maintain up to date. Um, so therefore, we need a automated mapping and an assessment system to try to have a efficient and scalable way to generate a, a map that can be used by pedestrians. So here we present our solution. Uh, we, pre uh, we develop a, a scalable and affordable way to produce the pedestrian path data at scale. And our solution can be divided, divided into two parts. At the upper half, um, we use the aerial satellite image and other globally available data sources to generate real sidewalk data at scale. And at the lower half, uh, in order to capture the additional information that cannot be easily learned from the satellite images, uh, we use the second system to capture the street level images and use some computer vision models to segment the the street level infrastructure and to generate the accurate connecting map. And I will start by introducing our uh, the first subset of our project. And the core idea of our solution is to let the machine do the human work. And then data is the foundation to any machine learning approaches. Uh, unfortunately, currently uh, from a machine learning perspective, perspective, uh, there are no large scale you know, data sets that specifically target the pedestrian environment. So as the first step of our solutions, uh, which introduce the annotation for the pedestrian environment data set. Um, here we develop methods to rasterize the uh, GIS annotations from multiple sources and from multiple uh, geo geographic areas. And the data we collected in this data set uh, covers the selected region in those cities, including Los Angeles, California, um, Belleville, Washington, Quito, Ecuador, Sao Paulo, Brazil, Santiago, Chile, and Grand Rapids, uh, consisting of uh, about 4,800 samples and around 2,700 kilometers per land area. 
And the classes that we include in this data set include the sidewalks, shown as the uh, brown in this image, and the crossing, shown as the red, and the sidewalk, sidewalk on the bulb, shown as the blue. Um, those are the three most important classes to understand and describe a uh, pedestrian path network. Uh, because this is our focus, so we map all other classes, including uh, buildings, a row, or a vegetation into the background classes, but we can also add it back to the data set with the same uh, pipeline we use. And along with the data set, we present this end-to-end uh, -end system to infer a connected pedestrian path network graph, uh, we call the system profit. Uh, which do the inference of a uh, pedestrian path network graph in three steps. And the first step is this, what we call the seeding step. In this step, uh, we, we use a tool that we develop for pedestrian fur um, to do three uh, different tasks. First is to use the existing street networks to infer a um, optimistic sidewalk network, and then also use the existing street network uh, uh, and the proposed sidewalk network to influence the street crossing locations, and also provide a preliminary conjecture of the curb interface locations. And in the next step is where um, the computer vision part uh, comes into the place, uh, where we uh, use a multi-input segmentation network that train on the data set that we uh, that I just talked about, a data set to generate to, to generate the pixel-wise uh, predictions. Uh, with the aerial satellite image and the street network image tiles. Um, so the network utilizes the information from both the satellite images and the existing, like the rasterized version of the street existing street information. And by using both inputs, uh, our, our, our model is able to generate accurate pixelized conditions. And then in the last step of our inference pipeline, um, we use the information generated by our computer vision model, and then we go back to correct and refine our hypothesis, generate, uh, which is a over optimistic uh, hypothesis. Um, by then, we use the uh, prediction from our neural network um, to try to find a parameterized, a fine transformation to try to move the nodes and the edges, edges into the correct locations. And upon testing um, our uh, approach in several uh, small areas, we then used um, the approach to generate data for several trans agencies uh, for, for multiple uh, counties. So we generate six, the data for six entire counties in three different states, covering around 600, oh, sorry, 16 and 600 kilometers of land area including King County, uh, Snohomish County in Washington, uh, Hartford and Baltimore in Maryland, and Columbia and Monomer in uh, Oregon. So that was the first subset of our work, um, but there was challenge here for learning from the error satellite image. Um, the first challenge is that um, the image resolution is often low in some some of the regions. Uh, we noticed this particular for the north and uh, for the South American cities. And the second challenge here is that oftentimes there are occlusion in the images, uh, and in that case, it's very hard for the model to learn from these images and in turn generate a prediction with low confidence. So, in order to capture additional information for those um, low confidence uh, prediction area. Uh, we put, we present our the second second subset of our work, uh, in which uh, we build this uh, prototype of like a on device automated sidewall mapping assessment system. So this entire system is built on a low power uh, portable computing device. It captures the street level images. Again, use computer vision to segment the street level images and then generate accurate uh, sidewalk infrastructure and connectivity mapping information. And there are three modules here in this uh, prototype. prototype. Um, the first module is the hardware system. Um, as I mentioned, the system is designed as a independent add-on kit that, uh, that's very small in size and can connect to any mobility device, including a power wheelchair, or a uh, scooter, for example. 
and then it uses a stereo camera to capture the street level images, also recording the GPS location while the system travels in the sidewalks. And then we use a computer vision model to try to understand, analyze what's in the scene, and then segment each pixel uh, into a class, represent each uh, different classes. And in the last step, we have uh, our mapping module, which combine the information from the uh, segmentation uh, network, which is the computer vision system, and the GPS location captured by the system and to generate the uh, mapping information in real time. And here is a um, like demo of the system while we bring it into the real protection environment. On the left, you can see while the system travels in the sidewalk, it maps the location um, of each sidewalk fragment, also inference width and connectivity. And on the right here, you can see like different infrastructure, including the traffic sign, traffic lights are also being segmented because um, those are important in measuring the uh, walkability and accessibility of the sidewalk. And this is like a example visualization of the map output. From here, we can see, um, so the red represent where the sidewalks are, and we can see how they are connected, and the, the size of the, the, like the, line, the, line, the line width, it's represented as width, and then the traffic signs and poles or, or other uh, identified objects uh, are related to the map sidewalks by their geolocations. And I will further share some um, some result from a pilot study. And this one was done in uh, Redmond in Washington state. Here we tried to map this uh, under construction transit station. And here the different colors represent um, the red is represent where the, the system inferred to be sidewalk. And then the yellow is where the system inferred to be missing sidewalks. And in this first example here, as we can see from the street level image, so the entire path has sidewalk and is well connected. So in our mapping outcome, the entire portion is marked, uh, is marked as red. And then in places that there are sidewalks, but they are disconnected, sometimes because of driveways, we can see a mix of uh, red and yellow in our mapping outcome. And in places where there is no sidewalks uh, along the entire street, we can see like a the entire portion on the map in outcome is marked as yellow. Uh, similarly, we have another study done in the Bellevue, Washington State. Uh, we can see like where there is sidewalk. Um, there, are, there are disconnections and there are missing sidewalks. And then in this last pilot study, we uh, conducted a, uh, like a case study of King County Metro, and we tried to use our system to map the same stretch of sidewalk uh, while the paratransit team do the same. And then we noticed that our system is able to reduce the operation time by over 80% compared to like a human surveyor's annotation while generating results uh, with a comparable accuracy. Uh, and a standardized format. And this is another uh, visualization of our uh, mapping outcome. Uh, we produce the data in a standardized GeoJSON format, and then you can directly use as a uh, data layer in OpenStreetMap with tools like Rapid for additional human auditing or uh, uh, modifying. Um, just a summary, so pedestrian path network data is very important for building a accessible city, but that data is very hard to collect and maintain manually. So we provide solutions that's scalable and, uh, and affordable, and then it's automated to replace the human efforts. And the data we produce in, in standardized uh, open sidewalks formats, so we can be easily shared across different organizations or reused by downstream applications. Um, so that brings me to the end of my presentation. You can see our full paper for more details, or you can send us emails if you have other questions. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.